Can I do that out? Yes, fine. <laughs> Hey, okay, right, so, um, yes, CSS Grid. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna explain a couple of very, uh, some of the core concepts behind Grid. Um, so the first things we're gonna talk about are uh, tracks, lines, and a, a very clever unit called the FR, or the FR, as it's, as it's called. Um, so this is how you define a grid. Um, so you display grid, grid template columns, one for, one for, grid template rows, one for, one for. Uh, as you can see here, what that does is it creates a grid. Um, track lines are oh, we've got pointer. Out. Yes, uh, track lines are these bits. So these are the tracks, and these are the track lines. Um, they are numbered from one. So depending on what kind of person you are, this will either infuriate you or you'll act, love it. Uh, most programmers go, "What? Why is it not start from zero? Most designers go, "Ah." Oh, <laughs> The, uh, the track lines are created automatically when you define the grid, um, and what you can see here as well, they also have reverse numbers, so this helps you if you're positioning stuff uh, um, from the right-hand side or, or the bottom. Um, they uh, help you, you can explicitly place items on the grid uh, with, uh, by referring to the track numbers. Okay. Grid areas, now I love this. Okay, so this is displaying a grid, um, and what we're doing is we're using ASCII to build our grid. So what we're saying here is uh, in this grid template areas bit where there are spaces, though those are gaps between the different areas, and we're saying the first two bits are part of the head, you can call them whatever you want, apple, banana, whatever. Uh, a, um, a period or full stop is uh, an empty space in the grid. Um, so what we're doing here is we're saying we've got four columns and we've got three rows and these are our four columns and our three rows. And what that does is it builds this. So now you can see your track lines but you can see your named areas. So if we bounce back, what you can see here is we've got head, head, space, side. Head, head, space, side and so on. And also using the FR unit, so we've said two, two, one, two, so it's gone, okay, that's seven, yeah, seven, uh, and it's left a gap for us here. So, so this, is, this is very, very nice, and you can explicitly place items on the grid by referring to areas. Now, because you can do that, you can do that. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so if you want to, you can, um, you can define your grid uh, in Emoji. Now, I love this feature of grid because uh, it's code as documentation. Uh, I mean, that's probably not great, uh, but <laughs> this means you can explicitly say, this is what the thing is going to look like. And there's a really clever thing you can do with media queries then, so you can shuffle this stuff around as well. So you can make, and here I'm using it for an overall site layout. Uh, actually, I'm not using it. This is an example I've ripped off the web. Um, but you can also use it for components, so this is really good to like, shuffle components around. Um, okay, so, uh, the case study. Um, I, on my personal site, I used to use a system called Skeleton, uh, which is a, uh, a very lightweight framework, um, lighter than Bootstrap, but it's still involved me adding markup to my site, um, which for me, as someone who really cares about front-end development, uh, felt uh, a bit icky. So I decided to take the plunge. Now, um, Skeleton, oh, four minutes, cool, I can do this. Uh, Skeleton is uh, a standard 12 column uh, layout. So first thing I did was I cleaned up my markup. Uh, imagine there's like lots of interesting content here and here and this sort of stuff. But this is essentially the, the, the framework of my site. So I have this layout class and then I've actually done some, um, some more specific stuff here. So the first thing I do, so this is, uh, uh, I love this bit, Repeat 12 times one fraction. It gives me a 12 column grid. I can also say I want a two rem gap between each column. Um, and then what I do, because grid applies to the children of the thing that you've defined the grid on, so what I'm saying here, so this is like mobile first, small screen first, whatever you want to call it. Every direct descendant of something that has that layout class, I want it to start at track line two and I want it to span 10 items. So this is me basically saying, start here and go here. So here again. So this is, this is in the Firefox developer tools. They've got some really good stuff for grid in here. Then you can do your breakpoint. So I say, okay, once it gets past 1,000 pixels, 
I want the main one to stay starting at two, but I only want it to span five. And I want the sidebar to start at eight and span four. And that gives you that. This took me probably um, half a day to implement. Um, and it was a very good way to get into grid very quickly and just go, this works. And now I'm, I'm using it a lot more and there's some uh, stuff I'm doing for other clients. Some other tricks you can do. Uh, yeah, I've got enough time for these gifts, that's fine. Uh, so there are browsers that don't support grid yet, although all the major manufacturers got together and released it at the same time. Um, so you can use uh, the supports feature query. Now, if you don't know about this, this is great because you can put any sort of CSS thing in here, but you can build your site using floats or whatever, uh, and then you can say to the browser, everyone that every browser that supports grid supports supports, yeah, um, and uh, then you can then override what you're doing. Uh, be careful with this though; they can get very unwieldy very quickly. Uh, so the question I then get asked a lot is, oh, what about Flexbox? Um, now, the difference is that Flex works in one dimension, Grid works in two. A lot of the examples I've showed you here are um, all about getting it to automatically lay out the grid. Thing is, use both, okay? Flex is brilliant if you've got something that, like navigation that you want to be able to <laughs> cleverly roll around. I know my audience. Um, you want to cleverly roll around. Uh, these are all available on my uh, gift repository, by the way. Um, so it's not an either or, use both. Um, I've got like one minute 23, I could just leave that up for a minute. Um, so uh, Jeremy, post, uh, Jeremy Keith posted a, a great thing uh, well, a couple of months ago about how uh, at ClearLeft he was working on a design for a new client and he started working in grid and he was done within about 20 minutes, whereas normally if he was doing it with floats or if he was doing it with any sort of framework, that may have been half a day to work out the layout. So it's incredibly powerful and it does take a bit of a, a, a change. Um, I've only touched on like the, like the tiniest percentage of these, um, but yeah, come and grab me later. Um, I'm doing a bigger version of this internally for Elsevier uh, and hopefully I might come back next year and do the bigger version, uh, which means I have to find like twice as many cat gifts. Um, that's it, thank you.